Okay, now, this then leads into a nice, interesting point, and it'll be the last thing that we look at today, okay? Which is that you can see, for some functions, for instance, this one, right? No matter what inputs you put into this, no matter what inputs you try, you can try any numbers you like, there are going to be some outputs that are impossible to get. Can I say that again? No matter what inputs you put in here, no matter what values of x, there are some values of y, some outputs, that you will never, ever, ever get. You can try as hard as you like, you'll never get them. Okay? For instance, I happen to know uh, that the number y equals negative 6. You'll never get there, right? You can try every single value of x that you want, and you'll never get to negative 6. Or negative 7, or negative 8. How do I know that? Because <laughs> I have magic powers, right? Think about it. You have all the tools you need. It's on the graph itself, right? Uh, this is a quadratic. It's a parabola. I chose that on purpose, right? Um, where's the vertex of this parabola? Where's the lowest spot? It's going to be at, uh, well, x equals 0 and y equals uh, negative 5, right? It'll be there. It's that intercept as it happens, okay? Now, because that's the vertex, right? It's going up in this direction, it's going up in that direction. It's never going to go below negative 5, right? Another way I would say this is, there are some restrictions on the outputs, okay? I have a, um, I have a, um, uh, a juice maker at home, okay? And it's a really great thing. Like you can put all these things out of it, uh, into it. But guess what? You're only ever going to get juice out of it, okay? It's never going to be able to bake a cake. You can put in all the flour and water and eggs you like, it's just going to make flour and water and egg juice, okay? Not very pleasant, okay? You can put in a whole bunch of different inputs, but you'll only get certain outputs, right? At the same time, now have a look at this second one, this guy over here, the circle. I know it's not a function, but I'm still going to illustrate it from it. There are certain inputs that don't work. You put them in, you try and evaluate them, and the machine breaks down, right? If you go back to my juice maker, right? If you put in flour, it's actually gonna break down, right? It'll just say, forget it, I'm not even gonna bother, okay? And it'll like start putting out smoke and all that kind of thing. Certain puts make it break. For instance, if I said this was x squared plus y squared equals one, that's the familiar unit circle, right? A value like x equals two, x equals two, it's gonna break my circle. Can you see why? Why is it gonna break the circle? Um, where is where is the unit circle? Um, this is 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, right? And x equals 2 is over here, okay? Nowhere on the circle can x equal 2. If I want to think about it in terms of like trying to put it in, it would become 2 squared plus y squared equals 1. What would I do next to simplify this a little bit? Y squared I'd subtract y squared. 2 from both sides, yeah? y squared equals negative 1. But there are no numbers that we know about that you can square and get a negative, okay? So, therefore, out of this new way of notation, right, we get this new idea called domain and range. Let me give you a definition for this, okay? Domain and range is all about, well, if some inputs break our function, right, and if some outputs are impossible with my function, then I want to know what works. I want to know what is possible. Okay? So domain simply means what x values can I put in? Right? Because some work and some don't, as you'll see in a minute. And range means what y values can I get out? Because sometimes, no matter what you put in, it's impossible to get out certain values. Okay? So let's do some quick examples. E.g. Um, we'll do domain first and then we'll move on to range. By the way, if you're trying to work out which one's which, um, you can think about it this way. Domain and range, D and R, are alphabetical, just like X's and Y's. Or if you like, um, <laughs> I have a year 11 student, and she said, oh, I remember what domain is, because domain is like dough, like pizza dough, and people make pizza dough by stretching it out this way. Like, if you stretch it out this way, you're some kind of weirdo, right? So domain goes wide, which is X's. Take it or leave it, okay? Uh, now, 
Let's think about some functions, right? Uh, let's go with this guy. What's this guy has a name? What's he called? Starts with an H. A hyperbola. A hyperbola. Right. Now you can quickly see, right? There are some values of x I can put in here. They're great. But there are some values that break the rules of the universe, right? Before we say what the values are, quickly, what's this thing look like? How would you describe it? How would you describe this? First and third quadrants. Very good. First and third quadrants here and here, right? And you're getting this curvy shape, aren't you? There's that part, and then there's that part, okay? Now, there's a couple of things I'm missing off of this graph, right? What do I need to put on here? Extra features. Yeah, the asymptotes, right? The dotted lines, okay? Now, I'm going to put one in first, this guy. The equation of this asymptote is x equals 0, right? That's where the asymptote is. But what that implies is that the function y equals 1 over x, it can't go there, right? Because you put in x equals 0, and what happens to y? It just blows up. 1 over 0, actually, it's not 0, it's not infinity. It's undefined. If you like, I can give you a long argument for why it's undefined, why it can't be defined. But suffice to say, it isn't. Okay? So therefore, x equals 0 doesn't work. It's not an x value I can put in. Right? If you're less than 0, you're OK. If you're greater than 0, you're also OK. But if you're at 0, you're in trouble. Okay? So I would say, for this graph, the domain, I'm just going to, from now on, I'm not going to write the full word. I'm just going to abbreviate it. The domain is, now mark this, it's x is less than 0 or x is greater than 0. That's the domain. Okay? That's the way I would write it as well. I'm going to borrow this language from inequalities that we've seen before. Okay? Let me tell you a way not to write it. A way not to write it. x can't equal 0. Now that's a true statement. x can't equal 0. But it doesn't answer the question. Because look, what was the definition we just slapped on this thing? What x values can I put in? And you say an x value that you can't put in. Okay? It'd be a little bit like, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar. There's this, um, <laughs> if you ask me what my favorite food is, right? If you ask me what my, what my favorite food is. And I say, well, um, I hate durian. Now, if any of you know what durian is, right? Um, durian is a fruit that's grown in the tropics. And um, it's a large fruit. It's about the size of my head, which is pretty big. So it's, it's a big thing. Uh, but more importantly, OK, firstly, it's covered. It's very, very heavy. It's like, it's like a watermelon in mass OK, and size. Uh, but it's covered in spikes, right? It's growing on a tree. If it fell down from a tree and you were underneath it, it would kill you, right? Like it's that heavy and that spiky. And not only that but it smells like it has killed someone. It smells like something died, okay? Now, some people, go figure, they love this food, okay? If you're one of these, I'm sorry, all right? I hate it, okay? Now, if you ask me, what's your favorite food? And I say, I hate durian. I haven't answered the question, right? I haven't answered the question. Domain says, what can I put in? What's going to work? And if you say x is not equal to zero, you are telling me the opposite thing. You're telling me what doesn't work. It's not the answer. Does that make sense? Okay. So therefore, um, don't do that. I'm, I'm going to rub that off so you don't see it. X is less than zero or x is greater than zero. That's the way I'll say it.